The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome to this introduction to Timeform USPPs presented in partnership by Daily Racing Form and, of course, Timeform USA. I'm your host, Peter Thomas Fornital, the DRF tournament editor and host of the DRF Players podcast, joined today by Mike Hogan, the stalwart of these handicapping sessions and webinars. He is the director of product marketing for Daily Racing Forum. And we have a very special guest today, doesn't usually do interviews, but extremely articulate, and no one in the world knows more about this product than him. He is Timeform US founder, Mark Attenberg. Mark, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm nervous because I'm on with the two leading um, podcast uh, slash webinar hosts in, in horse racing. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm a little nervous. You guys will have to treat me gently. Is that is that sort of like a nicest guy in prison thing? <laughs> that, that type of couple of that. Mike, how are you doing today? What's going on in the PRF office? I was going to say when there is no lion, the monkey is king of the jungle. But uh, I'm doing good. <laughs> I'm doing good. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, this is uh, this is the second one of these that we've done. Um, I would encourage everybody to go to drf.com slash YouTube if you missed the first one with, with the chief Timeform US figure maker, Craig Milkowski. That was a fun one we did a few weeks ago. Uh, that site it will have this webinar posted later today. That one went really deep into the methodology around figure making, both in terms of speed figures and pace figures which is uh, really, really helpful if, for anybody that, that handicaps races. This one's going to be a little bit more high level, and it, it's, it's frankly probably a better one for me, who is admittedly much newer to the Timeform USPPs than obviously either of you guys are. I can recall, Mark, sitting in your office, gosh, it must have been five or six years ago um, when the product first launched and you very kindly taking me through and showing me everything that was new and different about the Timeform USPPs. And that's what we're going to do here today. This, Even if you don't know anything about Timeform USPPs, absolutely perfect place to start. Like you said, if folks are interested in digging a little bit deeper, you can right away go to that drf.com slash YouTube channel, check out the one we did a few weeks ago with Craig and also other webinars we've done talking about formulator handicapping sessions, talking about big races, lots of cool content on drf.com slash YouTube. So over the course of the next hour, we are going to go through the basics, show you how to get started using the Timeform USPPs. We're going to take a look at where you can find the speed figures and pace figures and some of their basic applications. We're going to take a look at the added information you'll get about foreign horses in the Timeform USPPs. We're also going to show the very cool charts feature where I spend a lot of time, talk a little bit about trainer ratings, sibling info, race ratings, and more. We'll also have a little Q&A session at the end. Maybe we can answer some questions as we're going through. Mike will demonstrate how you can use the webinar software to submit a question as we go through, and we'll get to as many of those as possible. Um, so without further ado, gentlemen, I think we should dive right in. Mike, how do we want to start off? Um, well, I will navigate to the timeformus.com site, but as I'm doing so, Mark, why don't you take a couple minutes just to talk about uh, Timeform USPPs and why you created them so many years ago? Sure. Um, so the idea was, um, you know, I'd spent many years at the Racing Forum um, working on the Formulator project, and the idea was that as data was getting easier to work with, not that horse racing data is easy to work with, but as data was getting a little easier to work with and easier to display on the web and also on tablets, that um, there were some very high level things that we could do uh, that were smarter, um, that were also sort of faster. So in other words, how do we get um, the sort of uh, more sophisticated information to a horse player more quickly? Um, and so that was sort of always the philosophy, was to make PPs that were more visual, um, that had a look and feel that were more modern, and just sort of help people understand races faster. And really, in a lot of ways, it's proven to be complementary to uh, DRF PPs. 
um, and we see a lot of our customers use them both side by side. Um, but the philosophy here is um, to, to basically take sophisticated uh, information on pace um, and just really uh, sophisticated information on statistics and just turn it into a much faster experience, a faster way of looking at the races. Um, and so that's, that was what uh, got us started a few, you know, s several years ago at this point, five or six years ago. And um, Craig Milkowski is our chief figure maker. That's sort of bedrock to anything that we do is that we have Craig's figures beneath um, any kind of the, the features that we'll show you today. Um, and you know, we had a team of about seven to ten guys who, who, uh, who worked on it, um, a broader group of people who worked on it um, and you know from the beginning and we started to conceptualize things like the pace projector which is probably our most popular feature which you'll see in a, in a minute um, but really every everything we do in our approach to, to try to go, go after uh, handicapping from a more visual perspective. And I just want to second that idea that Mark brought forth there about using the Timeform USPPs in conjunction with the DRFPPs, whether you're a classic user or a formulator user. So many of the best players I know rely on both products, sort of cherry-picking elements of both to help them in their day-to-day -day horse playing. And uh, it can be a very powerful combination, of, as we've seen, especially in the tournament world. Uh, Mike, where shall we go from here? Yeah, before we log in, I, I just want to note there are some free PPs, as you can see on timeformus.com. You can access uh, a couple races each day. Uh, we're going to look at one a little later, but we're going to go through the regular login pro process. I already have an account, so I don't need to sign up, but if you, if you don't have an account, go ahead and sign up. It's free to sign up, and you have to sign up in order to access the free PPs. Once you've purchased a plan or cards, then you can log in. You get back to this. You click find a track, and we're going to start by looking at a couple races tomorrow at Gulfstream Park, right, Mark? You wanted to look at. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was looking at. Uh, I was looking at the eighth earlier, and I know we're going to look at the tenth, which is which is just uh, one of the free races, so that people who are who are free members can can access the tenth. But we, I wanted to start with the eighth, um, just as a way of looking at. Uh, some of the, the value-added um, features, some of the things that people look for when they look at Timeform USPPs and sort of how they quickly assess a race so that, you know, we're sort of doing the work for you, um, that we're basically uh, taking some of our more sophisticated algorithms and our pace ratings and our speed figures and um, uh, sort of displaying them in a way that, that speeds up the game. Um, and so this race, I mean, the things that I noticed were, you know, and we're just using it not as a, uh, you know, some sort of incredible race, but more as just a, a, a typical race to look at. So if you click on the pace projector, Mike, um, for, the, for this race, um, and this is, you know, this is sort of the, the first thing that a lot of people look at to assess a race when they look at Timeform US. So this is uh, the call. Um, a, this is a projection of the pace for the race a quarter mile into the race because um, it's a sprint. And in route races, we look at a half mile in. In sprint races, we look at a quarter mile in. And so the idea there being that we have pace figures um, and um, you know they're top notch, and you'll see them in the in the PPs in a few minutes. But really, what we're doing uh, algorithmically, and then and then with the data visualization, is let's go ahead and take those pace figures and take the horse's habitual running, uh, running styles and let's turn them into a projection of what the early pace is going to look like. If you are very sophisticated on pace um, and you're, you're, um, you know, you've been doing it for decades, you, uh, and I ask you to kind of uh, go ahead and lay out your own pace projector without looking at our stuff um, for all the races on the Gulfstream card, you know, you're going to perform about as well as we do. Maybe you'll perform a little worse. Maybe you'll perform a little better. But in general, that's a very time-consuming activity for the horse player. So to algorithmically uh, go ahead and look at um, the, the horse's habitual running style and go look at, look at our pace figures and then lay out our projection, it's just a time saver. You know, it's a way of getting into the race more quickly. Um, if you're newer to racing, it's also a way of uh, understanding how that race is supposed to look, um, what to expect. So in other words, if you bet on that seven horse, like a charm, um, who's a closer, you know, you, you have an understanding looking at our, just at our preview page and looking at our projector, you have an immediate understanding of, listen, I'm betting this horse to come from behind this pace. Um, you know, that's, that's the idea of what this horse should do. Um, and so that's, that's, that's what the, how the projector is valuable. There's a lot of subtleties to the projector. Um, 
So you'll see in this case we show the five on the early lead. We're going to look at five that five's PPs. You can go ahead and click on it, Mike, because we can always get to the projector uh, uh, from the, from the PPs as well. But what, what we're saying in this race ultimately, um, if you go, if you click on the projector again just for a second, just to surface it uh, at the top of the top, yeah. What we're saying in this race is, listen, this is a race without a lot of pace in it. So it favors horses who are either on or near the early lead. So that's why you've got that blue flag. The blue flag is not, does not show up a lot. We have a blue flag and then we have a red, a red flag for a fast pace. They don't show up a lot. They show up uh, maybe 20% of the time you're going to see a blue or a red flag. So that in itself is, okay, that's a real indicator that, that we're pointing you to the pace of this race. We're telling you to take a closer look. By putting that five in front, as clearly as we have, the algorithm is saying, listen, this horse has every every right to get the lead. But what we're also saying is that it's a disadvantage for horses who are coming further behind. And in fact, a horse like the three, who's sitting second, that's a horse that you'd want to take a look at just from the perspective of, okay, it's, it, if the five doesn't get the lead for whatever reason, how, what about the three? So we're saying favorites horse, you know, horse on or near the early lead, not necessarily just the front runner. Um, the interesting thing about um, there's a, I'll show you something interesting on the three and then something interesting on the five. Um, actually, jump back to, if you could, Mike, to the five for a second. Sure. Um, so on, this, on the five, run to glory, okay, you start to see a lot of things that sort of pop out. One is this horse is coming out of dirt, of dirt races and today's races on the turf. And you can see that right away with um, the, if you look at those ovals that are in the horse's running line, you can see that, that brown uh, dirt color when I wear it to the top, it's clearly a, a green turf race. Um, so there's, you know, you can immediately scroll through the PPs to say, "Well, wait a minute, is this horse ever run on turf?" And you and you can immediately, you know, jump back and have that visual at the end of, "Yeah, the horse in fact did run on turf and looks to be you know, roughly surface neutral based on the speed figures I'm looking at at the right hand side." Um, so you know, do you have the ability to sort of uh, quickly assess uh, based on uh, the color of a horse's uh, running lines, whether they bring on synthetic, turf, or dirt. So we're trying to use color coding there in, in a way that's like, what's the best way to get someone to quickly understand the race? Um, the w one thing that I noticed right away on this horse was the race rating for this horse. So if you go to the left of the uh, running line, you'll see the 73. So this is a horse that um, is coming out of races that uh, his last race actually was a uh, much a, a significant drop down in class, and how do I know that that 73 is a drop down? If you go to the oval at the top, you'll see today's race rating, which today's race rating is an 83, um, all the way at the top of the PPs. Um, so you can see that 83. So today's race rating is an 83, and the 73 is the uh, you know, indicator that the horse is stepping up in class. So uh, what are we doing with those race ratings? You know, compared to what you might be used to seeing in other PPs, and in particular DRF PPs. What we're doing is we're saying, hey, listen, the condition uh, uh, abbreviations that you see in past performances, and in fact, just the entire condition book that you see in horse racing, is it's very difficult to compare uh, those races to actually, if, you're, if you think you could make money in 2017 off of, well, this horse is eligible for non-winners of three other than, and in fact, um, he's running in this this race that that is just barely he barely fits on the conditions. Congratulations, that's great, that's fantastic. If you think you're if you're getting an edge off of that in 2000 in 2017, you know we're we're, we're totally impressed. But for most horse players, really, what you want to know is is this horse coming up in class, or is this horse going down in class, or is this horse sort of at the same class level? And what you can see is in that race uh, 15 days ago. Um, you know, the horse clearly was dropped down in class, right? You know, that 73 tells the story. And when you look at his races that are more like, uh, you know, today's race, the, the, the races prior to it, you know, typically he was, uh, those, those races were in the dirt, he was sort of fading late um, in those races. So the, 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 I just wanted to point out that race rating is, is a way that we sort of take, uh, you know, what typically is a, a, a question for players, which is class, and just sort of simplified into a single number. I think that ability to quantify the, the class aspect, very important for a lot of players. And it also, Mark, from what I understand of how the rating is created, 
almost doubles as a, a form rating in terms of the form of a race as a way to help you find particularly live races at different classes as opposed to just being mechanical where a number equals a class. So that gives you yet another insight into which races might have been stronger or weaker and help you to conveniently compare those to the level of horses running at today. Sure. And one other thing I would point out, and this is this is where you know we were always thinking about a more sort of conventional horse player. Um, if you could, Mike, click on next to the seventy three is that dirt oval where it says where it says the a little bit about the conditions of the race. If you click on that, um, you can see that we actually have the entirety of the conditions for the race spelled out. Um, so that it's it's always there for the horse player. Um, you know, we, we are we are thinking about someone who wanna, wants to ask a more conventional question, um, and, it, and if you go ahead and X out of that and click on the opal at the top as well, uh, in terms of today's conditions, again, that, that's that's right there as well. So we're thinking sort of both ways. That boy, there's always a chance to click through, and there's always a, a layer of data that we can put underneath. Um, but how do we sort of assess the data for the horse player to to get them to the, the questions they're looking for as fast as possible. So, Mark, let me ask you this. This is sort of a question coming from one of the listeners, Nathan Prather, who wants to know if um, it looks at next out winners. But it, I guess I'll, I'll ask it another way, which is, does this race rating potentially change? Uh, do you go back, like, for instance, if this did have four next out winners, would this race rating potentially go up? Or is it, is it once yeah. it's created? It's great question. Yeah, good question. So um, the the race rating is looking at um, the speed figures, the race rating, the 83 at the top, the race rating for today's race, right? Um, that's looking at the speed figures for the horses who are running today. So it's it's basically um, looking at, 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 the, at the recent speed figures of the horses who are in today's race. Whereas that, so, that, so today's race is an 83. But if you actually... Um, after they run today's race, if that race were to come back fast, right, um, to, to sort of Pete's comment, uh, if that race would actually come back particularly strong, um, we uh, we will upgrade that rating based on the actual speed figures run the race. So it's a it's a moving target, I think, in the best possible way, meaning that okay, this is our you know this is this is the number that that looks like going in, and then we go ahead and adjust it coming out based on what actually happens. So a particularly strong or weak weak race, we're going to capture that. That's been very helpful to me sometimes looking at allowance races when you have horses coming out of different maiden races, and of course all maiden fields aren't created equal, and there's some diving, deeper diving you can do to go and look back at a field and see what every runner did coming out of that race. But I love the idea that I can get some idea of that at a glance, and that'll help me to make the decision if I want to do that deeper dive. Just one of the ways that the Time Form US can save a lot of time. Hey, uh, Mike, I want to uh, I want to show people something real quick. Go to the um, the eight horse on the outside, the, the, the Wesley Ward horse. Yeah. When I was glancing at this race earlier. So this is a pretty good example of, again, us sort of taking the data and uh, uh, algorithmically adjusting and sort of assessing it for the customer so that we can save them time. So my first thing when I looked at this race right away was, I think, of, for right or wrong, um, I think of Wesley Ward as more of a abbreviated campaign or, or layoff trainer um, abbreviated campaign, first second layoff trainer, and this this horse, today's horse, you can see, is you can see that blue, um, uh, in his three to one morning line, you can see that blue uh, layoff line down in his PPs, so you can pretty clearly see like okay, there there's where the layoff was, and then you can see uh, the two races that yeah they have that big spacing between the races, the 49 days and the 42 days, you can see that on the left hand side, but this is effectively his third off a layoff. And so my question right away was, well, when I think of Wesley Ward, I, I just don't think of him as the type who would be good third off a layoff. I think of him as a, as some, as a, as a guy who's going to get the horse's effort first or, first or second out. So I immediately looked at his overall trainer rating, which you can see is a 93. And then I clicked on, um, go ahead and click on Wesley Ward's name uh, in the trainer ratings. And you can see what pops up is a, a more detailed set of trainer ratings. And underneath trainer moves uh, at the bottom, you can see his rating for third since the layoff, which is a 58. So 
I happen to be right this time. There's plenty of times that, that, that I'm not right. But um, either way, I had to get the question answered right away, which is, here's a guy who excels um, in general. You know, he's had great success. But when he goes third off the layoff, um, his numbers plummet. So when I'm looking at trainer ratings, and I'll, and I'll explain just a little on how they're made, but when I'm looking at trainer ratings, I'm really looking at today's overall rating. Uh, or the horse's overall rating, the trainer's overall rating, and then I'm looking at, okay, how does that compare to today and, and anything to do with today's situation? And the, to me, the, the visual that jumped out right away was this, this horse is third off a layoff, and I wanted to know immediately, okay, is there anything there for Wesley Ward at third off a layoff? And the answer was, yeah, he's, he's considerably worse third off a layoff. Okay. Trainer ratings. How how do we do it? What you know? What's what's the idea of our, our approach? And I think it's interesting to talk to a couple guys who um, you know are, are deeply ensconced with with Formulator because it's a really sort of different approach to than than what what, what Formulator does. So um, what we do is we look at the last five years of data uh, for every trainer, and we then crank up um, uh, the algorithm. Looks at uh, win ROI, it looks at uh, win percentages, it looks at in the money percentages, it looks at a, uh, show, it looks at, it looks at show uh, ROI a little bit. So it's looking at a bunch of different uh, uh, elements um, that you know potentially a way a trainer can, can succeed. And then it's way, there's weightings that go on for recency. So we're actually looking at the last year most heavily, but we'll go all the way back as far as as five years and. That's really what. That's really the way it's looking at it. So instead of looking at a, a trainer and saying, "Well, this guy is he's a 17% trainer with a a dollar 64 ROI," we're actually weighting those win percentages and again the in the money percentages, and then we're weighting those ROIs in such a way that it it spits out an overall rating on a hundred point scale. So you end up with a, a snapshot way of understanding a Wesley Ward um, as a 93, and then you also understand that. He does have a history of, of uh, running horses back uh, enough to actually qualify for a, a trainer move, in this case, third off a layoff, and he's a 58. And so basically, we take all of that sort of in-depth uh, analysis that you guys like to do, Mike in particular likes to do with Formulator, and we synthesize it into a snapshot rating. So the great thing about something like Formulator is you can actually really get behind the numbers, and that's that's the idea of Formulator. Whereas in in the, in the case of Timeform US, the idea is much more of a quick understanding, a quick snapshot of either a trainer you think you know, like Wesley Ward in, in, in my case, or if you're looking at a track that you're not familiar with, you know, just to, to get an immediate understanding of a trainer that you don't know. And you could definitely see how both of those would have their uses in various forms. Formats, and I thought that was a key point you made, Mark, about comparing the trainer move in question to the baseline stat. You can do that too in Formulator, but it requires several more clicks to be able to get that understanding very quickly and then maybe find areas for research where you want to go over to Formulator and use that extra ability to really drill yeah. down and look at every single runner a trainer sent out in the last five years. These are both very powerful tools that, for me, I use in conjunction all the time. Yeah, and yep. I, obviously, as the as the formulator guy who who does a lot of work in the trainer uh, tool, uh, I like the high level one, and then the ability to jump in and go much deeper. The other thing I really like is on trainer switches, and I don't know if we have an example in this race, but in trainer switches, it will give you that high level overview of this is uh, maybe an eighty rated trainer claiming off of a, a trainer who has a 30 rating. Well, you can tell right there without even going in and doing the deeper dive in Formulator that right. this is likely a barn upgrade. Right. And so if you could go back to Run to Glory for one more second, the five horse. Uh, the one other thing I want to talk about, and I know Craig um, is, is certainly a, a, a much more the expert um, than, than I am on this, and he's been um, really helpful, obviously, uh, in the, in the you know, previous uh, uh, interview he did that you guys put up on YouTube, but also he'll be back to talk about it some more. But the way we do speed figures is different than um, almost anybody else. I think almost I think anybody else. There's there's no uh, other speed figure that's pace adjusted the way Timeform US speed figures are. So if you look at the race two back from Run to Glory, um, you'll see what he did effectively was if you look at his pace line, which is the, the line underneath. Um, his speed figures, you'll see that he basically started out fast, um, and as the race went on, he tired, and his final time figure was 
to 77. That last number is effectively, it's a speed figure, it's the closest thing we have to something like a buyer speed figure. It's, it's more just focused on the final time of the race itself. Um, whereas that 86 to the right, which is the time form US speed figure, that's actually his final, that's, that's the horse's speed figure that's been adjusted for pace. So that 77 is bumped up to an 86 again, uh, rigorously, algorithmically, um, after a lot of research. So we, we have pace adjusted speed figures. And so what it'll, what it'll do is, is you'll get a, a better understanding of um, a horse's capabilities. Uh, you know, or a, 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 it'll take a look at a horse's capabilities when faced with uh, a challenging pace scenario. It, it, it will give you a better sense of what a horse could actually run if the pace scenario was not as challenging. Similarly, if a horse actually gets away with murder on the lead, uh, we do a pretty good job of dialing back that figure to, ref to reflect that. And so pace adjusted speed figures is kind of a, a difference between us and, and what you see in DRF. And to me, there it's, it's intensely complementary because of the difference. Um, so you've got, you know, the sort of like uh, industry standard or best in class uh, uh, speed figures that Buyer Speed Figures puts out. And then you've got the pace adjusted speed figures that Timeform US puts out. And it's a great way to sort of get a comparison, uh, two different views of a horse. And you know, that's, 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 again, it's sort of our bread and butter. Well, absolutely. I mean, that's one of the first things that Andy Beyer will say is with the speed figure, you always have to question, well, how did, how did the horse earn the figure? Uh, so you're taking that a step further with uh, incorporating pace into it. makes makes total sense. Yep. And I love that idea that you can see them side by side, get a real sense of what the pace adjustment was for. You have the, the raw final figure, the adjusted. You guys still call it a, a speed figure. In my mind, I think of it almost more as a performance figure trying to capture yep. a little more about the ability of the horse based on the pace scenario. And it'll go in the other direction, too, where, where a horse trying to close into a slow pace is going to be uh, rewarded a little bit for that, too, Mark. Isn't that right? Yep. That's, that's exactly right. And actually, Mike, you just read my mind. Um, you're showing the, the how, to, how to actually adjust a running line, which if you could, I'd ask you to click on, to X out of that and click on it again. Sure. Um, just to show people, it's just as simple as clicking on a running line. This works great on a tablet or, or obviously uh, uh, you know, just on a regular uh, PC. You just click on a running line and you're able to make whatever adjustments you want. If you want to look at fractions, um, if you want to look at uh, pace figures, which I've become certainly after working with Craig for the, all these years. You know, I've become really comfortable with a, a pace figure in a running line. But this is kind of a fun thing to do. Go, change it to fractions um, and adjusted times from official times, yep. and then go ahead and hit save. Um, so if you're really if you're not a pace figure uh, player um, and you actually want to look at um, uh, fractions, if you're interested in fractions, you know, if you think about speed figures for a second, um, uh, whoever makes the speed figures, um, really what you're saying with a speed figure is, here is uh, a final time that, uh, here's the judgment on how fast the final time is. And we thought, you know, a great thing you could do there for people who love fractions is you could actually do adjusted fractions. And so we actually have all of the fractions moved to an adjusted scale um, so that you can actually, effectively, it's almost like putting a, uh, a speed figure underneath each fraction or turning each, each, each fraction into, again, adjusted in the same way a speed figure is. So it's a neat, it's a neat feature for people who are more into uh, raw fractions. And the other thing that happens is a lot of times when you see blazingly fast closing times on, uh, in, uh, in turf races, like in a turf sprint, for example, but in any turf race, you know, there's, there's two factors. One is it's a horse who... Uh, is a late runner in a race that you know he didn't have to run that fast early. But the other thing is, a lot of times those those turf courses can be rock hard, and so when you see some insane closing fraction, it's nice to see. Okay, show me the actual adjusted uh, closing fraction, and uh, and if if you could, might go back in one last time to the the fractions and change it from accrued to incremental on the right side. Okay. Uh, and you'll and you'll hit save, and you'll see that it, it, it's it'll show that that last fraction, but adjusted for how, track, how fast the track was really playing that day. And I love that you can look at this particular horse as opposed to just the leader and the winner 
Uh, and the other nice thing about this, this is similar to Formulator as well, it, it, it carries over to all of your other views. So once you set that, that's your preferred view. And if you went to print and you printed the full card, that's how you would see those PPs. Yep. Do you want to jump to race 10 um, just yeah. because it's a free race? So if people are actually logged in um, and, quick, they don't, and they before, yeah, go ahead. Before we leave this race, I know you wanted to mention a little bit about number three, uh, Queeb, who had uh, oh, yeah. in one of one of the recent races had a, uh, a speed figure that was questioned. Yeah, so one of the things that we do, if you'll scroll all the way actually to the bottom of Queeb's PPs, I didn't have a, a, I didn't have a, I couldn't find another example. There it is. Um, I just looked at this race real quickly. Um, if you look at the, the race at Laurel on April 23rd, next to that 77 for the race rating for the race is a, is a little uh, O. And what that O means is that um, actually it's a question mark figure. And we have a, a series of and you can look them up uh, easily on the, at the top of our site. If you go to their home page, it's, there you go. Um, there, there's a how time form US is different, but also it's not that hard to find if you, you know, the, the question mark uh, figures piece. But basically, we have a, we have a series of speed figures that, um, uh, that, that a series of, of notations on speed figures where we find them questionable. And in this case, it, it was because it was the only turf race on that card that day. So we felt okay about the figure. It's not that we felt it was terrible, but it was difficult to assess um, when there was only one turf maiden claiming race on the card that day. So the, the figure's there. It's a 73, but it isn't as rock solid as our, as our figures usually are. And so what we do is in that left box, we put a little notation to let people know that, for example, if there's a problem with a timer, um, which uh, happens just every once in a while. Um, uh, whether it's uh, whether there's uh, it's the only race on that uh, at that surface or distance in a given day. There's a series of uh, letters that you might see very rarely, but when you do see them, it's interesting because whether again whatever whatever other products you might be using, it's good to know that okay this is this is a time that was in question for whatever reason, or this is a speed figure that's in question for whatever reason. We like to give our, our customers a heads up about that. And there's a lot of great information in general about the Timeform US product via the Timeform US blog. In fact, one going through every single one of those symbols and and showing you. And if we're going over some stuff here that you want to get stuck into a little bit more, the descriptions on the blog are really good. And I would recommend a new user if you're somebody who learns not just by doing but also by reading about things to plan on spending some time there because there's uh, great information. Yeah, timeformusblog.com um, and, and, and you can get it easily from just from the Timeform US home, home page but also timeformusblog.com it takes you directly to the blog and it's, a, it's got a lot of how-to and, and explains a lot of the nuances. All right, let's jump to that 10th race. This is, if, if you want to follow along on screen, this is one of the uh, free races that is available on timeformus.com for tomorrow, uh, Friday, Gulfstream Park, race 10. It is another turf race. It is a uh, seven and a half to turn turf race. Um, Mark, why don't you walk us through this one a little bit? Yeah, um, I mean, the interesting thing again is, um, and again, uh, if, everyone, if, if you, you can grab this right, right off of our home page, but if you click on the pace projector, um, you'll see uh, right away that this race is set up as a fast-paced race. Um, it's, it's a, as Mike mentioned, it's a two-turn race that basically we see as congested up front. So you, you really would, I think, in that situation, start to look for, for closers um, because the, the pace would look to compromise those horses up front. But having said that, um, we're very. The algorithm is very sensitive about about uh, calling a race a fast-paced race. So, as an example, we we made the decision to pull out um, in almost any scenario to pull out fast pace out of five furlong turf races. Um, you know, abbreviated abbre abbreviated sprints um, in general. You know, you know, they're typically won <laughs> with a fast pace, and so we don't we don't like to flag that um, in most scenarios. Um, along the same lines. Uh, you know, a lot of American dirt racing is simply one with a fast pace. So we don't really say favors closers, right, typically. We do ever. Um, we always just flag it as fast pace, and then we leave it to the horse player to be uh, more sophisticated, right, and to actually think through, well, okay, it's a fast pace, but 
you know, the horse who's in front is, is clearly the fastest horse, or actually this looks to, to compromise a, this looks to compromise a, a front runner, or whatever the case may be. Um, and so, uh, in this case, though, I would definitely use our early and late ratings um, as a way of sort of thinking about the race. The, our preview page, the advantage of our preview page is, let's jump in as quickly as possible. Let's look at a pace projector, click on the pace projector, and then let's look at some early and rate rating, late ratings. In this case, when I see a congested two-turn turf race, my immediate thought is, all right, who's got the best late ratings in this race? And what are the morning lines, right? You know, show me the morning lines so I can start look, looking for some value if this race is going to set up for closers. And so the, the, the late ratings, the ones that I can see that, that jump out to me are My Good Venezuela and um, Some Florida Sun. And so you, know, you, can, you can click on either of them. But I would, to me, it's just a way in, you know, that, I, that immediately I would understand that those, those are a couple of horses with popping late ratings, whereas the horses that, that have in those 90s and even the 100s for, for uh, uh, a few of them, you know, they're, they're potentially all compromised. So sometimes you would start from front to the back in, when look, using a page projector as a way of jumping into the PPs. But in this case, I would almost start from back to front and then start to look for who has those best late, late ratings. Absolutely. That's and we should, point, we, should, yeah. we should talk ahead, real Mike. quick about how the um, – we went in depth on this on the one we did with Craig, but we should talk real quick. This pace projector is essentially determining the running style that you see here, which is the, the word – whether they tend to be on the lead or mid-pack or a closer. And then the first number you see is the early pace rating. Um, I'm sorry, I, I clicked in there accidentally. The, the first number you see is the early pace rating, and that is taken from the last five races for the horse. It's, it's kind of a, uh, an amalgamation of those. And then this l second number after the word is the late pace that Mark was talking about. So you'll see my good Venezuela with the 95 has the highest late pace figure in the race, followed by some Florida sun fun with an 89. I think right. That, yeah, that what you said before, Mark, also I just wanted to underline because I think it's a really interesting thing rather than handicapping a race from the horse who's in the one and then looking at the two and then looking at the three, there's something a little more dynamic and vibrant about looking at a race uh, typically from front to back, maybe in this case with the, the fast pace, as you suggested, going the opposite way. But I, I, that's something I know our podcast co-host Jonathan Kinchin does regularly with the pace projector. And I think it's just a, a perfect example of how the Time Form USPPs offer a different way of looking at the racing world. Yeah, one other thing I would say is, to me, I'm still thinking about sort of the classic handicapper and how to modernize or upgrade the game, and that's that's what our team is always thinking about as well. I think one thing I would say is, if you're a trip handicapper, right, if, you, if you're looking at race replays um, a lot, you also obviously should be thinking about a visualization of today's race as well. So you're not just looking at the replays, you're actually, you know, you're projecting how that today's race is going to play out. And that's what we're trying to help people with is, you know, give, get, get them information more quickly, get them um, engaged with um, replays in a product like Formulator or from actually, you know, watching the races live and taking their own notes. Um, but then, but then get them to a visualization um, or a potential visualization of today's race as quickly as possible so that their trip handicapping can be sort of applied going forward. Um, just to go back to the late rating because it's such a popular feature, um, and I kind of, I think I did an okay job there of, of scratching at the surface of how people use it, which is, okay, hot pace, show me who's got the best late rating at a starting point. Just, I just want to be clear, like, it's not a, it, in some ways some of the algorithms are really simple. But there's a lot of factors that, that are looked at and that have been tested over the years. You know, we're looking at, in a late rating, we're looking at a horse's last five races, as Mike mentioned. We're looking at uh, uh, the second call in the race to the finish, um, basically how the velocity of the horse in that situation off of his, uh, his, his pace figures, but also um, how many horses he actually passed, right? Is he actually passing horses? So we're looking at surface and distance. Um, so there's, it's a pretty sophisticated algorithm that is distilled down into one number, which is, I think, why it's as, as popular as it's been. Is there any way, Mark, to get the, the individual late pace rating for each running line, or is that a calculation one would have to make oneself looking at the pace call and the final figure and doing math? Yeah, it's, uh, it's something that we don't offer. It's um, something that we 
get howled at um, for not having, and we're we're going to we're going to put we're going to put in the individual. Uh, uh, we're going to add it. It's a feature that we're going to add. It's a, it's you can do it off of an individual calculation, which is actually available on our site. Um, but it's something that we should offer, um, and, and we will. You were talking also before, Mark, about that idea of race design. Is how I've heard various professional players talk about it, and I know uh, specifically one player in particular that might be familiar to some of the folks watching, Mike Maloney, who's one of the biggest single entity horse players in the country and is a fan of Timeform US. And I know that he uses the pace projector as his starting point for doing that sort of race design in his head, where he'll he'll look at what the pace projector has, he'll make his own calculations, and when the two match up, he'll have more confidence that that race design is going to be the one that's going to play out on the track today. So it's something that um, I know a lot of players use with great success and just wanted to highlight that a little bit. Thanks. Um, so, hey, uh, Mike, do you want to jump to that uh, European horse that we were looking at a little bit earlier um, before the, the, the show started? Um, it w I think it was in the feature on Saturday. I think, you know, one thing, when I think about, like, what are the top things that people look at. They look at our pace projector, they look at our, our speed and pace figures, they kind of embr they learn to embrace the look and feel of the product, but um, you know, we, we haven't mentioned this time form. Um, so you know, this is the sort of, you know, the, the, the business was started, the product was started as, and still is, the U.S. Uh, brand for time form overseas and there's sort of uh, in many ways um, who we've worked most closely with um, until we started working more closely with DRF recently um, we have a, a, a very positive and uh, they've had a, a big influence on what we do and I think there's a couple things that we do with time form and I know you know time form ratings are now back in the racing form too which is great we do a couple things with time form that um, really if you're looking at US past performances we sort of have the most uh, complete relationship or most complete coverage of time form data. So there's there's a couple things that we do that are that are really worth highlighting here. One is when you look at our speed figure scale, um, which if, if you're new to the product, you may have been wondering about. It. If you look at our speed figure scale, we are on the time form global scale, um, and so uh, it typically peaks out in the 140s for the very very best horses. A horse like Frankel. Uh, overseas ran in the 140s. Our top time form U.S. speed figure over the last uh, you know, couple of years, I believe, is is a 139 from from Arrogate. I believe is the is the best number we've had over the last couple of years. Arrogate is, is and and California Chrome were both throwing up numbers um, in the mid 130s and higher. Uh, you know, over the last six six eight months, um, and so. It typically, again, or always, the scale is harmonized. Our speed figures are harmonized with the time form global scale. So it does a couple things. One is it gets to, gets us to a place where we're on the scale that time form is using for horses um, around you know around the world as they cover you know racing around the world. But two is when a horse ships in um, from overseas, you have the advantage of seeing what the, the horse's speed figures were from overseas and having a, a, a decent comparison point between what they were running overseas um, and what they're facing today again, right? So, you know, if you have a horse who's running 120s overseas for time form and shipping in to a, a race here where it looks like a 110 would win the race, you, know, you have a, a pretty clear sense right away that the horse had an advantage on uh, the time form scale. And again, you have a, a, an advantage in, in time form USPPs. So that's one thing about... Uh, time form and time form US is you're going to get that harmonized global scale. And the second thing that we get is really uh, sort of priceless information overseas from time form. If you, if you click on the running lines, um, whereas uh, overseas they don't typically have uh, 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 sectional uh, fractions as we do here in the US, um, you're going to get a much more uh, robust sort of trip note uh, uh, commentary, perspective commentary from time form on every horse. In fact, two back may even be a better yeah, two back example. Is yeah, this is a. Yeah, I mean, this is you know, this is the, the in a in a PP product that's uh, our PPs are three dollars for a race card or five ninety nine for uh, an unlimited access for a day. Typically, um, you know, the, to see this level of detail on. Um, this horse, who's running uh, on Saturday in, uh, in an allowance race, um, it's sensational. Um, it gives you a sense of trip trouble. It gives you a sense of just how good they think the horse really is. Um, it gives you a sense of 
uh, some sense of pedigree, um, and then, and you know, it, there's just there's no place else you can get it, but either by being a Timeform uh, customer, um, uh, you know, for overseas racing, or Timeform US customer here in the US. My dog, huge fan of Timeform. Uh, Apparently. Yeah, but, but uh, if they absolutely, those Time 4 PPs are the gold standard over there in terms of performance figures and the ability within a USA PP to click and have that info. It's even better than what you can get. If you're over there, you have to look up each individual horse. It, you can have that account here, but much better to have it all integrated into one set of past performances. Yep. And we, I wanted to um, answer a few questions. Uh, we had... A couple people ask about printing PPs. I'm not going to print the full card. Let's just go printing the single race. Um, yep. It takes a second. Uh, I hope it works. Uh, you find most of your users print mark or more of them uh, do, doing on the I think that, laptop? I think, that, I, I think one of the things that we tried to do when we built the product was to be as uh, anti-printing as we could. Um, that basically we saw it as a live uh, product experience on the web. Um, and so that has proven to be problematic in one way. Um, and the, it, it, and first, the thinking was, listen, people are going to have their tablets at racetracks. They're going to have their, their laptops at racetracks. Wherever they're playing from, they're going to be playing online. And the reality of the uh, playing away from home experience, if we, should, if we can call it that, is that it's, it's, it's not that reliable to have online access, as you guys know. And so the PDF that we built, um, we have a... Uh, a, a file that's a condensed file that Mike is looking at right now, and then for 24 hours out, so uh, we actually crank out a uh, uh, 24 to 48 hours out, we actually will crank out a uh, a more typical uh, PP uh, for any given uh, race card, and uh, you know they're okay. They're, they're, the, the, the condensed file is beloved by people who, who like that sort of stuff, um, meaning just to see just to see a, a, a snapshot of figures. The PDFs need to be improved. It's one of a, a handful of things that we're focused on, like right away. Um, uh, we started working with DRF to actually kind of leverage DRF's expertise um, to actually have a much more uh, useful PDF. People use it. Um, people use the PDFs, but we think we can do a better job with it. So that's, so that's one place that we're going because there, there always always has been requests for it. Yeah, and the condensed file I think is very helpful just to show the recent speed figures as well as the running style and the odds. It's it maybe is a is a good thing to print out or or use as a, as a way to start your day and key around it. But another thing that you mentioned that's that's worth uh, I think reiterating a little bit is is the early versus final PPs. The Saturday PPs for Gulfstream are not final yet, so you don't see the pace projector, you don't see the morning line odds. Uh, and of course, regular horse players are going to be used to that, but that doesn't come until a, a day or sometimes 48 hours out, and we're, we're still a yep. little early for the uh, Saturday, yep. uh, Saturday cards. So. Yeah, and the other thing I would say about this is, is this is a real-time product, meaning that when you look at that pace projector and there's a scratch um, uh, on the card um, or a surface change or what have you, the pace projector will adjust for that. So a couple minutes later after that happens, the projector will actually upgrade. So you might see a race that favors uh, uh, horses on or near the lead, but uh, that or, or let's say a race that has a fast pace and then after scratches the pace doesn't look the same. The projector will adjust to that. This is a, a living, breathing product, and that's what it was designed to do: was to adjust to uh, you know what actually is happening uh, on the racetrack. Yeah, I was trying to find a, a race today where there was already some scratches. Um, might not be posted yet, but uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's one of the nice things. The other thing I wanted to mention because it was a question for some of the users is. Uh, what happens for the running style with uh, a field where there's a lot of maidens? Well, I think this is a good example. Sometimes if there's not enough data, there's just not a pace projector created um, because of right. it, you don't know what first-time starters are going to do. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, there's rules in place, and typically if, it's, if we don't have enough stuff for like half the field um, or, uh, or, or thereabouts, we won't run a projector. So you know, in that case, it's good for uh, – there's actually a good example here. If you look at this race, the thing that you can use is the, is the early rating in that situation to get a sense of who actually might have the early lead. 
lead. So you can see that 95 is a stick out early rating. So I would, you know, if I was looking at this race, I'd immediately want to know, you know, how that happened, uh, and you know, and, and you know, assess uh, from that from that point going forward. Absolutely. So, can, can we can we uh, if you could jump back to another race, Mike? Any any race with uh, some horses that are more well ra uh, uh, raced? Actually, go to that. You can go to Wonder Gal race that you were mentioning. Yeah. Or really any. Uh, I just wanted to talk about our color coded bias indicators because I think that's uh, it's a feature that I use and I think a lot of players will actually use. Um, it, it's a a a, a, a well liked feature. Um, so one of the things we do is we look at. Um, bias in races or just the way races were run. Uh, I think bias in some ways, it's, it's a, it can be a misused word, but the, the, here's the interesting thing I think about Wonder Gal in, in her last race. It's that bright red 113. So she's running in the Barbara Fritchie, and what we're telling you is, and she's a, I believe she's going to be one of the favorites in the Barbara Fritchie, what we're, tell, what we're telling you is that in her last race, it was speed favoring. Um, that's what that bright red means, that speed did well. Um, and so, you know, you can go and look on the charts, um, which Pete mentioned. If you go ahead and click on Wonder Gal's uh, running line, um, the, the, the one, two, three in, in the running line, it'll take you uh, over, over to the right, uh, Mike, to the right of the speed figure, uh, where it says, yeah, w Wonder Gal, Chorus Line, and Jet Majesty. There yeah, there you go. Um, that, you can look at the charts for the day to actually do deeper research, but what you're going to see is that speed did well across that day. That's what that bright red um, means. And it, it, you might have a more, again, you might have a more sophisticated analysis after you actually go through um, the charts for uh, all, all the day, but we're giving you a heads up that speed performed well, and you can see as as you know, Mike, as you're clicking through the charts, you can see that in fact, you know, the last the last couple of races you've looked at have been have been wire to wire winners. In fact, now three 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 basically in a row wire to wire winners. So it's a way of contextualizing that um, that we have that that we think is helpful. If you could jump back into the PPs, um, I know we're running a little, starting to run a little short on time. I wanted to. Um, just scroll down a little bit. Let's see if we can find some fractions that are lit up blue or red. Uh, keep going. I don't see any for her. Oh, there, there you go. I saw one. There it was. Uh, right there it was. Yeah, June 27th at in the, in the Mother Goose. So this is telling you um, that those red fractions underneath uh, the uh, her her PPs underneath her running line. What that's telling you is. The, way, the pace of the race was hot early, and the way that basically the way the, the the fractions were run were very fast early, and then sort of slower late. And so you'll often see blue or red fractions within a running line to give you a quick sense of how was this pace run. You know, how was the pace of this race run? And you know, it's it's potent when you see a front runner who's had a, a sea of blue fractions. Um, it just means that they've been getting away with murder on the lead, um, whereas the red fractions tell you that you know in that case. Uh, Wonder Gal sat behind the hot fractions and closed into them, and it may have flattered um, her a little bit because she had a, a good setup for that, that sort of running style. Absolutely, one of the most valuable pieces of information, a great place to come up with horses to identify as potential horses to watch and put in your stable mail, whether you're seeing horses make early moves into fast fractions or seeing horses contend on the front end through fast fractions and still stay on well, maybe get beaten a little farther than the than the performance uh, seems like it would it would warrant there's a lot of great information and I would agree mark that's one of the, the main ways I use the product and it's just so easy with that color coding to identify the paces yeah and um, I just wanted to uh, take a minute or two if we could and I, I uh, I'll defer to you guys if, if there's anything else. But I wanted to, if we could, talk about um, just a real quick on some of the things that we're, we're going to be working on going forward. Um, one new product that we're is absolutely imminent, and then um, a few things that are um, that are coming soon. So I mentioned the PDFs that we're going to work. We're going to upgrade the PDFs because customers have been justifiably howling for it. So we'll we'll we will polish those up, um, and hopefully by spring have those um, in a much better shape. Um, we're, we're taking a long look at um, adding race replays to our product. Um, uh, it's just it's it's a missing piece that that we would like to add. And then I think um, you know without going too specifically into it, you can see how the product 
um, things a little bit in a more visual way so that it actually may make sense in a mobile environment. It already works well on tablet, but we think we can do some things on the phone um, that have never been done before. But, the, the, but one other feature coming up, and then, and then I want to mention something that's, that we actually are, is much more imminent. It's on the coming up side, we're close to um, introducing some jockey ratings, which are long overdue. Um, using our 100-point scale to just uh, do ratings for jockeys based on today's type of race. Um, so, uh, you know, how, how, a, how a jockey does in turf sprints, how a jockey does in, in turf rods, um, how, a, how a jockey does with this type of uh, horse, with speed horses, uh, a, you know, speed horse and a turf sprint. So we're going to introduce um, jockey ratings, I think, uh, certainly this year, and we're, we're, we're starting to sort of take a much closer look at those now. And we actually think we can use those to uh, improve the efficacy of the pace projector as well, which, um, you know, we have some studies on the site for how well the projector does. We think we can improve it by using uh, those jockey ratings a little bit. Um, it's, it's hard to hard to, to easily improve what, what, it's, what it's doing, but, but we think we can gain something there as well. And then the other the, the product that I wanted to mention that's much more imminent is um, we're working with DRF on something called uh, DRF Data Services, um, and basically it's it's taking all of the different um, more raw data products that we have um, and introducing them all together on one page. So raw maybe is not quite the right word for it, but there's everything from um, the formulator uh, uh, files that uh, you know race files that are offered to what's going to be new, which is an API for uh, Timeform US data, um, which will offer um, historic access if customers are looking for historic access to do their own database studies, but also an ongoing sort of live API, the, the same type of data that uh, populates the product and everything you've been looking for. If you want to use that um, for private purposes uh, to actually run your own database studies and to actually bet off of it on a day-to-day -day basis, we're going to make that API available um, you know, for for more high end customers as well. So that's something that we'll be introducing very shortly. Music to the ears of any would be databasers or current people using uh, computers to aid in their handicapping and horse playing. That's that's a powerful data set that I'm sure could lead to many interesting factors for the for those folks. Uh, Mike, we're running out of time. Do we have a few more questions from the audience we can maybe get to rapid fire? Well, we do have a lot of questions, but we have a comment from Craig Milkowski who, who mentioned uh, when you have speed, speed figures with the question marks on it, you often, he, what he likes to do is actually go to the charts and click through and look at how those races came back. So a uh, good comment from Craig there. Uh, and I'm sure that's a, a way that you end up doing it. So a question for you, Mark, based on that, once after there's some data, do you ever go back and validate and say, yes, we were right, or we, let's remove the question mark? Or um, Yeah, on occasion, but, but mostly what the thinking is is that we want to leave that flag in there to let people know. We, it's one of the reasons we removed... We, we used to have the question mark in a different place, and in the, in the last year or so, we actually moved them to... Um, so that's that's a race from uh, a while ago, but in the last, I guess, six months, we've moved them to over to the left-hand side and started to actually explain exactly why they got the question mark instead of just putting a question mark figure there. So the thinking is we want to leave that in there and let people know. Um, we took it out of the speed figure, moved it over to the left-hand side, and let people know that, listen, at some point, point this race was questioned, there's a reason for it, and most of the time that's a reason that you're still going to want to know, even if you're looking back a year later. And then to Craig's point, you can go and look at those speed figures and then sc and, and then see if the race actually is held up. Um, in terms of adjusting figures that were question mark figures, he'll do that from time to time, but mostly the idea is to let people know that really almost no matter what happened, that, that listen, there's a question associated with this race period. Makes sense. One other thing that we, we didn't get a chance to mention is your, your breeding ratings. We're looking at uh, Regia Marina, who gets a 100 because I believe she is uh, she has a sibling. I think uh, is it Verrazano? 
Uh, fast, well, there's, there's fast cookie, which isn't bad either. Fast cookie. Um, so, so uh, the, we call that the in-house. We call that the we call that the golden the gold midship, and we call it the golden 100. And uh, basically, at a certain level, when you've got a a, a siblings of a of a certain level, it, it bumps immediately to the, the the full 100. There's very few of those. You don't see those all the time. But typically, our, the thing we do with pedigree ratings that's that's um, different than what you see elsewhere um, is that is that we don't do pedigree ratings based on one uh, one and loss records. Um, we do pedigree ratings based on the speed figures on specific surfaces and distances for uh, the, for today's runner, and so the, for the siblings and uh, for the family extended families of today's runner. So you know you you will see the golden 100 on occasion when there, when when it's a uh, a horse who's got you know just a brilliant female family. Um, but mostly, what you're going to see is if you just ch choose any different choose any other horse. Um, you'll see that okay, it's a 92, and that's based on uh, very much based on this horse's uh, uh, pedigree, based on the speed figures as opposed to win, win and loss records. So we don't we don't want to know. We, we don't really care that this horse has a sibling that won on the turf, but that if this horse's speed figures plummeted, we want to know that um, actually that the siblings uh, you know performed well on the turf and actually ran as good or better speed figures. So we, we're using speed figures to actually make pedigree ratings great approach and, and certainly a little bit different and the application should be obvious for all, all horse players. Mike, one more quick question. Uh, just the last one, do, do you have this available for quarter horse races? No, although you, we can ask Craig more about that. I think he's, uh, he's, he's interested in it um, and it's not, it's, it's not out of the question. Um, it's just this, you know, it's, it's not out of the question. That's something that we would, we would take a look at. We want to make sure everybody sees this fantastic offer. DRF presenting an introduction to the Timeform USPPs. Three days of the Timeform USPPs for only $3.99. Give them a try today or for this weekend, and you can see the promo code there. It is timeformus.com slash promo slash three days unlimited, limited to one use per customer. Here's the, the real last question mark. People interested in more information, who should they be following on Twitter and where should they be spending time? Yeah, so I'll, I'll real quickly mention, um, Craig is great to follow on Twitter, which he's at timeformusfigs. Um, I am uh, will help oversee our regular uh, Twitter account, our main Twitter account, which is at Timeform US. But typically, if you ask a question, it ends up filtering its way back to a broader team of us. Um, that you know, TimeformUS.com is great for getting access to all the information that we've really discussed today. Um, and you know, those are those are good starting points. Uh, we will uh, introduce that data services uh, page. Um, and set people up there um, over the next few days. Um, I think over the next week for sure we'll, we'll be introducing that. Um, but signing up for free membership at timeformus.com is like, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer. It's actually a very painless sign up. It's much more painless than, um, than many and uh, it's, a, it's just a great way to get started with us. All right, great job, guys. That's all the time we have for this webinar. I want to thank Mark Attenberg. You did a fantastic job. I don't know why you're not doing these things all the time. I want to thank Mike Hogan for uh, doing an excellent job producing and leading the way throughout the course of the past half hour. One more time, if you joined us late, you can catch a replay of this show and so many of the others we've done at drf.com slash YouTube, including our discussion from a few weeks ago with Craig Mokowski may be a fun next place to go for folks ready to dive in head first to the Timeform USPPs. I'm your host, Peter Thomas Fornatel. Thanks for joining us. You've been watching a webinar produced by DRF.com.